I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you so much for watching uh, Brendan and my video on the Battle of Okinawa. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So after the Allied forces won Iwo Jima, they were one step closer to accomplishing their dream, which obviously was uh, winning the war. But the Battle of Okinawa, also known as Operation Iceberg, was one of the most important battles in World War II. It was one of the last ones, and it went on from April 1st, 1945 to June 2nd, 1945. Now essentially you got the Allied forces versus the Japanese forces for this battle. Now one thing that makes this battle unique, unlike some others, is that this was a naval battle, an air battle, a land battle, and you got the fire from the kamikaze planes, the Japanese kamikaze planes. So you really got like all the elements going here. The new 6th Marine Division was to land over the northern beaches on the western side of Okinawa, a little south of the island's midpoint. Now the Allied forces had some fine commanding officers in their armies, uh, one commander, was Lieutenant uh, Simon or Lieutenant General Simon Simon Bolivar uh, Buckner Jr. and uh, this guy was very important. He oversaw the land troops with uh, Admiral Admiral Raymond Spruant, who we'll talk about later. Uh, Buckner was considered the person that led Operation Iceberg, and um, while on Okinawa, he went to visit a forward observation post, but unfortunately was shot and killed. Uh, in his honor, uh, the large anchorage on the east coast that was originally called Naku. Gustu uh, Bay, I butchered that name, I'm sorry, uh, was later renamed to Buckner Bay in his honor. Then we have Admiral Raymond Spruance. Now, uh, Admiral Raymond was the fifth fleet commander. Uh, basically, him and Buckner, they ran the land, but the man that ran the seas was none other than Chester Nimitz. Admiral Nimitz basically led every naval attack on the Solomon Islands, and he's also considered one of the greatest naval leaders of his time. Once the battle was over, they gave him the newest and highest rank of the Navy, which is the Fleet Admiral. Um, but as you know, we got all these great generals, uh, obviously the other side had some great generals too, which we'll talk about now. For example, we've got Lieutenant General Mitsuru Yushima, which, who led the Japanese. Uh, no matter what, he refused to surrender, and he eventually wrote a letter. Uh, this letter talked about how the Americans were arrogant, and that he would pray for all those who lost their lives in this battle. He also apologized to the emperor and said that he wouldn't be able to see him anymore because he was a failure. He later went on to kill himself uh, so he couldn't get captured. This was considered a Japanese uh, ritual suicide. It's an honorable thing to do. Uh, the few Japanese soldiers that were left uh, soon realized they were doomed. Um, some simply felt, uh, you know, kept fighting for honor. Uh, but the next general we're going to talk about is Usamu Chao. And uh, Usamu Chao... Uh, he was the other man commanding the Japanese, and he was lieutenant general. In his early years, he attempted to murder the prime minister, uh, but he unfortunately wasn't able to accomplish it after being arrested for boasting about it. He also played a major role in the rape of Nanking in 1937. Uh, thousands of Chinese prisoners perished a year ago, or a year after he attacked a Soviet force without orders. Uh, he was clearly crazy. This guy was very crazy, and uh, he was very passionate about the war. Uh, you know, especially when compared to uh, Yushima. The last major Japanese officer was uh, Colonel Hiroshimi Yahara. Now, Yahara was a great leader. He was a very smart guy, and he had great strategic plans and tactics. He was also the man uh, with the calculated intelligence that both Yushima and especially Cho lacked. I want to thank you guys again for watching. At this point, I'm going to pass it off to Brendan, but again, thank you very much and hope all is going well.